Yo, what's up, everyone? We out here with another episode of Go The Mission, broadcasting to you live from Berman University, the Berman Ministry Center at Berman University in Alberta, Canada. Talk about we out here. We out here for real. And I have a special guest on the podcast today. I haven't seen her in years. I think the last time I seen her was somewhere in the mission field, but I'll let her talk about that a little bit. Jackie, welcome to the pod. What's up? How's it going? Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> of course, of course. I happen to be up here at Berman University for some uh, missions, talking and, and promotion, and I love talking about missions, but imagine my surprise today when someone comes up to me after church, and I'm like, wait a second. I know the last time I saw her, she wasn't wearing a mask, so it took a little while to register who it was. But I was like, yo, what's going on? And <laughs> you actually, you saw me at some point? Like at the very end of church. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. But yo, we out here back again, Palau in the house, repping as always. But Jackie, I got to start off the podcast. Actually, no. I'm going to ask you this. Tell us a little bit, like, why you're here. What, what's, what's, what's going on in your life? Well, <laughs> a lot. I think I have like a very limited um, sense of time, so I'll probably get these dates wrong. But I got back from Palau in 2020, mm -hmm. um, March of 2020. Everything went crazy. Oh, that's true. Um, some of the SMs had to go home. Some stayed. I ended up leaving at the end of the school year, I think around June. Mm -hmm. I came back home to here, <laughs> Alberta, and quarantined for two weeks. Um, that was when it all really started, and um, after that, I started working again with a nonprofit here, a local nonprofit called A Better World Canada. Mm -hmm. And I was for about a year processing things, trying to figure out where I was going to go next. And I finally came to this idea. I think that it's God led. Uh, I'm just seeing what doors open and what doors don't, but I'm hoping to get into my master's soon. Okay. Um, so I'm here at Berman, where I graduated a few years ago. <laughs> but <laughs> wow. I'm back and I'm taking some prereqs. That's to, what's up. Yeah, hopefully get into a program to do my master's. Okay, okay. Yeah. Hopefully that all works out well. Yeah. Many questions I have from listening to you talk about that there. We'll jump into that. But first question, always got to start the pods this way. What does mission and service mean to you? Hmm. That's a good question. To me, um, based on what I believe about God and the faith that I've formulated throughout my life, I feel like that's kind of just what we're all supposed to do. Hmm. And it doesn't always have to be on an international scale, mm -hmm. but service, serving others, I believe that's the model that we were given, and I believe that's what we were all called to do. So it's kind of just feels like, um, I don't know if I want to say the bare minimum, but it's what we're supposed to do as Christians in whatever capacity and whatever um, location, way, whatever job we have, whatever mm -hmm. um, opportunities we have. I think that's what is supposed to guide all of what we do. I like that. I like that. And you're describing what I like to call the mission mentality, something that it's not necessarily you go somewhere and now that you're in that place, now you're doing missions like it's some kind of event, but it's something that becomes a part of you that should be a part of us if we say we're Christians. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. And man, there, there's, there's so much there. Um, talk to us about what led you into your mission experience, particularly in Palau? If there's anything before that, uh, feel free to share about that as well. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm actually not sure exactly where it started, but I have had the idea, I've had a lot of family members actually, uh, siblings who have mm -hmm. gone on <laughs> student missionary trips, and that's always kind of been an idea of something I would have also liked to do when I was in university. Mm -hmm. And that ended up happening for my second year. I went to Maxwell Adventist Academy in Kenya for 10 months. Okay. And I was the uh, registrar's assistant. I was organizing the study hall. And I think maybe a month in, I started teaching the grade 9 math class. Wow. And that was an That's awesome year. <laughs> yeah. Yo, that is so cool. So Maxwell, what, was, what were some of the highlights of that experience? That... Um, 
looking back on it, that was like one of the best years of my life, honestly. I just fell in love with my students so much. And they're actually embarrassed when I say this, but a <laughs> few of them have come to Berman. Really? And I'm so proud to see them. And then I say, oh, these are my students. They're like, don't say that, Whoa, please. whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> no, see. And they've graduated now. So, oh, so yeah. they're gone. Well, some of them still are living around Alberta or some within Canada, but yeah. <gasps> that's, that's amazing. How many students did you see from your time there that ended up coming here? From the, the specific class that I taught, two. Wow. Yeah. Unless someone was here that I didn't realize, because that's <laughs> happened too. I, I saw um, one of my students at church like years and years ago, and I was like, <laughs> what? <are> you <laughs> Yo, that's so cool. What Did they ever talk to you about why they ended up coming here? I like to think it's because of me, but <laughs> <laughs> you no, know what? I'm, I, I'm kidding. I feel like it would be too, because otherwise, that's that's a that's a pretty long trip from Maxwell to here. Um, so you'd yeah. have to have somebody in there on the inside. Definitely, maybe um, I introduced the fact that there's a, a Adventist University in Canada, yeah. <laughs> which is cheaper than a lot of the other ones. So that uh -huh. might also be. There you a go. Factor. Spread the word. Yeah. I told them just to bundle up and I'll see you there. <laughs> I'm sure there were a lot of other reasons as well, but mm -hmm. I like to keep up in my own mind that, <laughs> that I helped. <laughs> I believe there's some truth there. I really do for a lot of reasons. Uh, what, what are some of the things that maybe you struggled with there that year? Um, I think a lot of it was probably the eventual wearing off of the honeymoon phase. Mm -hmm and kind of feeling like I was a little bit split apart between this new home that I had and the home that I had left mm -hmm. because they both actively felt like home. Hmm. So it was difficult to be away from my friends and family, but it was amazing to be with my new friends and family. And that has, I don't think you ever um, leave that state actually, because I still feel like that those are my people still, mm -hmm. even though I haven't seen a lot of the people who I taught with or who I taught in years and years and years, it still feels like that's a place that is like alive still. You know, that's interesting, the way that you're putting it. I don't think I've heard anyone describe it quite like that. Usually when they talk about the struggle and being apart from home, they're not talking about their reasoning for that struggle being that they felt at home in the place they were. Um, what what was it about the people there, the culture there, that you just felt at home with? Um, I think a lot of it was just how instantly at home I was allowed to feel. Hmm. And I think another really interesting thing about the missions field, especially for student missionaries, is that you are there with strangers, but you have a lot of common ground. You mm -hmm. have a lot of similar ways of thinking and goals and values. And that's actually a pretty unique part of it as well. And I felt that way with Palau as well, because I had already graduated from university and entered the real world in quotes, working and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And once you graduate, you're not always in an area or a setting because people move away, like the friend group that you've created in university, a lot of people don't live um, where the university is. Mm. So if you live there like I do, <laughs> a lot of people have moved away. And um, just, the, just the opportunity, I guess, to be around other people who share that faith, who share that um, desire to be where you are as well mm -hmm. and to be able to relate to in that way. Honestly, a lot of it is even just like singing together. Hmm. There's just this beautiful part of feeling like you're in a community that, I mean, of course, there's differences course, within every course. single um, <laughs> group of people that comes together. But I think it is a pretty unique experience in many, many ways. And just one of those ways is being able to be with people who who you can relate to mm -hmm. in that way. Yeah, like-mindedness. Yeah. So that, that makes the, the progression even more interesting then to me because you find that you're in a place that you're allowed to feel at home, at Maxwell. And then for a lot of people, they, they take that first year of experience and say, all right, I'm good. 
I, I did it, and now it's back to the rest of the real world. What, what was the transition like from there to ultimately ending up in Palau? Yeah, that was, that, there's so many years in between, it's kind of crazy how it all came together, but um, I've actually had, in both of my mission experiences, both of the long-term experiences, a lot of trouble coming back home hmm. and not just a few weeks of trying to sh figure it out again and trying to like resettle and process everything but like months if not a full year after coming back having a lot of things to work through having a lot of um, mental health um, I don't want to really say baggage but a lot of heaviness to work through um, when I came back from Kenya I felt that I was not doing anything hmm. anymore. So I came back from feeling like I was really actually doing something, and I came back to continue going to school. And I was like, what am I doing right now? <laughs> like, I'm literally helping no one but myself. Hmm. So that was a difficult transition for me to make. Mm -hmm. um, and I had always wanted to, at some point, do another, um, uh, in, in any capacity really be open to missions again in the future mm -hmm. and a few things did come up and I just didn't want to force it and it to be me something that I was trying to like push into place if it wasn't where God was calling me at the time mm -hmm. so a few things didn't end up happening and then Palau that was like um, I think it was 2018 and I got back from Kenya in 2012. Oh, wow. So yeah, so I was, um, I graduated, I was interning and then working for this nonprofit that does international development. So mm -hmm. that was a very good experience as well. Mm -hmm. But I went to visit my siblings, <laughs> <laughs> um, my brother, my oldest brother, my sister-in-law, my niece and nephew live in Palau. Mm -hmm. So Shout I'll, out Mike and family. Yes, our, <laughs> our sibling group went to Palau f for me for the first time, just to see everything and see everyone and to hang out with our family. And when we were there, um, Mike and Iran were just joking about how to get all of us to stay. <laughs> so they were saying what jobs different siblings could do. And then I think it was Mike who was like, and you can teach at the school here. And I was like, yeah, I could. <laughs> and actually, like that same trip, I, I was able to meet with Abner, the principal. Mm -hmm. And it all started to kind of fall into place. And then that was March. And then in July, I was booking the tickets, I think. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, so it all kind of, it's actually crazy how it all fell together because I had all this list of things that I was like, okay, if this works out, then probably this is where God's leading. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think it would. <laughs> <And> <laughs> that's, then, how it, yeah. that's how it goes. And then the dates um, that I was worried about, like even down to things like my lease up uh, at the apartment ending that same month mm. and all of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And when I got back, I was pretty jet lagged and I was up very early in the morning and I was just considering it and kind of nervous about the possibility because it's new and it's different and I was a little bit just like considering it all and I decided that I was going to just like grab this notebook from a random pile that I had and just kind of write stuff out mm -hmm. and kind of like my thoughts to God kind of like a little prayer thing and it was about whether or not this was the right thing to do and then I closed the book after that and on the front of it, it said, he said, go. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually the branding from, I think it was a, um, when I was a missions coordinator at this school, wow. I went to the campus ministries <laughs> retreat. And I think that's where I got that book. What are the odds? Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> that has to be an answer, right? <laughs> yeah. And then everything else fell into place. And then I found myself there. And that's like... <laughs> That's the one thing that made me pretty confident that that was where God wanted me for at least two years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Yo, that is so cool. <laughs> so you have this experience where it's like, oh, uh, I, can't, I can't say no now. <laughs> and <laughs> you end up in Palau. What, what was kind of different about that experience than the one you had before? And yeah. It was different in many ways. Um, 
it's just teaching wise I had a lot more classes than I did when I was at Maxwell mm -hmm. and so it was a lot more than I expected honestly at first and I, I just had to get used to a lot and having a lot of students and a lot of classes and a lot of work and a lot of trying my best to teach the best that I could mm -hmm. and um, navigating different aspects and avenues of trying to be a good teacher, trying to be a good help, trying to be a good missionary, I guess, <laughs> which I which I honestly have some some things <laughs> that kind hey, of uncut yeah, no filter. This is yeah. how we roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just there's I guess certain expectations of missionaries. Okay. And sometimes it feels like you're not able to be yourself mm. because you are kind of given this image of being an ideal Christian. I say that with a question mark because I don't think anyone should be viewed in that way because we're all flawed human beings. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it's imposed externally or internally, but as a missionary, I at least felt I had to make sure that I was not flawed. <laughs> Which is not, it, no one should, should try to hide the fact that you're flawed because mm -hmm. that's true. So there's yeah. just certain expectations and certain um, like pressures. Again, I'm not sure if it's externally or internally, but feeling like you have to say yes to everything because mm. you're here to serve God. And one of the biggest things that I learned in my two years of Palau was that, and so many people told me this too, my brother was one of them that was just continually repeating this to me. And I was like, yeah, I know, but I don't, what it, I don't think so. <laughs> like deep down, it took a while to sink in is that if you are not taking care of yourself, you are not going to be able to take care of other people. Mm -hmm. You are not going to be able to reach your full potential mm -hmm. in the place where you are. If you're trying to spread yourself too thin, if you're trying to take on way too much responsibility, you're actually going to do a worse job. Mm -hmm. And to me, I really had to wrestle with that because saying no is a hard thing for me and um, doing anything that kind of feels like it could be selfish is a hard thing for me. Mm. Because again, as Christians, I think we're supposed to serve, we're supposed to give, we're mm -hmm. supposed to do what we can to just give of ourselves. But I have recently been learning <laughs> that mental health is an important thing Very in order so. for you to be able to do that long term, but also well. Yes. You know, it's, it's a great point you're making there, this this kind of tension between is it external or internal? Because I, especially being at seminary now and just some of my experiences to this point, I've been able to see that there's the external expectations I don't think actually match up with what the Bible's telling us it should be. <laughs> like this, this whole thing about needing to be perfect or a certain way. Uh, I could sum it up best by this quote I read in, in Steps of Christ a couple days ago. It was talking about how the only thing that can satisfy the requirement of the law is perfection. And that's the, that's the only thing that is accepted. And I get how people can read that and put it with all the things we see in the Bible and say, oh, we have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. But in the very next paragraph, she says, you can't do it. <laughs> ah, that's you know? an important part <laughs> yes yes it's like you can't do it all we can do is submit our will to God and his perfection takes our place that's the formula it's not anything that we can do and yet somehow within Christianity we have this external pressure that we have to do all of these things a certain way and we do feel that and that that pressure which is an external thing does become a part of us and it makes us think that if we're not measuring up to that standard now there's a problem with us mm -hmm. <laughs> so i definitely see that and it's a i think it's an important point that needs to be made a lot more like christians and this whole idea of perfection i think we have it wrong straight up <laughs> i think we have it wrong uh if if we were really going to because uh, this is another thing a lot of times even as christians we we say things and we make these big statements, 
but we don't think about the natural conclusion or result of that way of thinking. And if we're talking about everyone needing to be perfect, then don't we have to throw out everyone in the Bible except for Jesus? <laughs> we already know Moses in heaven, right? We know Elijah's there. They weren't perfect. They made a ton of mistakes. Yep. Moses, Moses ended up not going to the promised land because of his big mistakes. And yet, for us now, we're supposed to be perfect? It doesn't, it doesn't match. So yeah. that tension that you're talking about there, um, that's, it's a really valuable point to make, and it's a discussion that a lot of people, I think, could benefit by considering, because it's true. And I would, I would agree, because again, comparing the seminary to the mission field, when you have people like pastors who are looked at as representatives for something, or missionaries who are looked at as representatives for something, that, that tension increases because it's like, oh, because you're a representative of this, you have to be all of these certain things. Yeah. And so the, the danger is when people aren't able to see us as being real or ourselves, as you said, then when we do fall or when we do make a mistake, it's an even bigger deal because of all the stuff we were supposed to be upholding before. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I've never been a pastor, but my same thought extends to pastors and really anyone in leadership positions mm -hmm. is that we're having a different standard applied to our pastors because they're our leaders, but they're not perfect. They're also human <laughs> beings. And we need to extend understanding about that mm -hmm. because it's such an unhealthy way not only to view someone, but to be viewed yes. is to not be allowed to even admit to having struggles. And that's why I love hearing Christians talk about their present struggles mm -hmm. because a lot of times we talk about what we got over what we came through what God brought us through and a lot of times we're not talking about what's going on right now that we actually can't see the future yet <laughs> of God bringing us through it mm -hmm. what's currently on our hearts what are we currently struggling with because everyone is yes <laughs> there's no one who's not struggling with something mm -hmm. And as a community, we should be able to understand, extend grace, and support all within each other because we're all going through different things that we feel we might not be able to share mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Judgment, admitting that we're not perfect, failing to uphold what standard we think we should, mm -hmm. etc. <laughs> there's, there's so much there, and you're right. And it reminds me of how the most... When I talk with students uh, on this podcast, a lot of them would talk about the moments that really stood out to them, and it was the moments when they saw SM struggling or going through something, wrestling with something, but being open about it. Uh, the moments that uh, the missionaries would talk about their experiences and the, the struggles they had in the chapels, those are the ones that stand out to them the most because that's when they knew that we were real. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, wait a second. So I can be a Christian and still struggle? What? It's like a foreign concept to us now. And it's almost like we, you do hear that in Christianity now. It's like, oh, there's the Christian struggle, all that kind of thing. But from where it's said to where it's applied definitely seems more like just an idea. But you're not supposed to be the one struggling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, there, there's, there's so much there. There's definitely two sides of that, too, though, because... On, a, on one hand, I feel like Christians aren't allowed to reveal or talk about their struggles. But on the other hand, we can really glorify struggle. Because when I was in Palau, there were lots of struggles. Mm -hmm. And I was working on practicing this growth mindset and viewing the struggles as opportunities to learn. And like, if you're not struggling, you're not growing, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so I was really all in it to experience those struggles and to be able to grow from them. But on it, within that as well there can be too much sometimes like there's balances yes. there's middle ground for everything but the accepting I'm realizing afterwards mm -hmm. as I, as some of the long-term things um come up after I've after I've uh, left Palau is that sometimes there's too much and sometimes that's hard for you to to handle mentally yeah yeah I agree that you mentioned the, the golden word balance. That's, that's what it's all about. And I've known people, even in my own family, who it's almost like 
uh, what you're saying is so on point. It's like glorifying the struggle. So it's almost like they're going, they're putting themselves in a position to struggle on purpose because there's something great about the struggle. Yeah. And it, it's it's hard to watch sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so no, I yeah, understand. Really. And it's it might not even be that like you're experiencing extreme hardships, but it might be a, a mental struggle that you're trying to work over work through something or a spiritual struggle mm-hmm. that's not really visible on the outside but very real to you. Mm-hmm. So balance is something that I'm trying to learn because it feels like there's just Like you can look at the extreme on one side or the other, but it's very hard to to accept that bothness of so many different ways of (laughs) thinking. But specifically for this one, for struggle. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a pretty awesome lesson to be able to learn in you know reflecting on your mission experience. And as Jackie's saying, it's not like we're all just because we're talking about it now doesn't mean we got it all figured out mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's there's still yeah. plenty to go Absolutely. and plenty to learn with this but having that awareness in the reflection is a step in the right direction that's what we're trying to do so with the struggles um you managed to stay for two years so there had to be some good things about it too Absolutely. talk to us about yes. the things you enjoyed about the experience oh my gosh <laughs> so many wonderful things <laughs> and wonderful people not only being able to spend two years with my brother, Mm -hmm. my sister-in-law, and watch my niece and nephew (laughs) grow up for two years. (laughs) No, see, hold on. That right there in and of itself, I I don't think I thought about that enough in reflecting on the different people I work with out there. That had to have been a super cool experience to be serving with family and to get to experience that. Yeah. I often only have seen um, seen my siblings and my niece and nephew maybe every few years, but I've never spent that much time with them, and it was uh, it was so much fun, <laughs> especially <laughs> hanging out with them and getting to know them mm-hmm. as who they are as very just absolutely wonderful individuals who are growing up still now. Yes, indeed. It's yes, crazy. indeed. <laughs> yeah. So it was awesome. I even was able to teach my niece math oh, nice. the first year third grade math <laughs> fun fun and then um also getting to know the students that i taught mm-hmm. falling in love with them falling in love with my co-workers with bilung our mom <laughs> like just let's go yes incredible amazing <laughs> welcoming accepting people that i was able to meet there Oh, we lose the best, man. Yeah. The best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, all hail the queen. <laughs> uh, that's that's the thing that makes the experience though, it's the people. And again, it's you're you're almost saying it by the way you're describing this here, but a lot of times we go into the mission experience and it, it can it can be portrayed as a job. But if we go into it as just a job, we're gonna miss the point. And we're going to miss all the fun of it. Yeah. It's like we get to go. It's a privilege to go and hang out with a different culture, different kinds of people, and just to learn how to be be one with them. That's where the fun is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. And, of course, within that, there's, there's struggles because with every individual person um, interacting with another individual person, it's not, I'm not trying to make it sound like, like every day was incredible because there was tension at times. There was disagreements at times. Mm-hmm. But overall, just getting to know amazing people and spending time with them and being welcomed yeah. <laughs> is a, is, was really beautiful. Yeah, that's and what still I'm talking is. About. I, miss, I miss them a lot. You're going to have to go back. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. It's the only option. you got to go back. Yeah, I was planning to the year like the following year before I knew that we would be in a chaotic pandemic, but I'm True. still, I'm still hoping to. Yes. Soon. Oh my goodness. That's, that's actually where I was going next. Cause you have an awesome two year experience with the highs and the lows, but that that's part of it. And you get down to the point of the end of your second year there. And all of a sudden COVID, what was, what was that? like that was chaotic (laughs) like very much so um and very unsteady Hmm. for several weeks because there was so much um 
unknown even just like it was march break when we got this mm -hmm. call that we were going to have a meeting with all the um, student missionaries or ABS2 teachers to discuss whether they would be staying, we would be staying for the rest of the school year. Mm -hmm. And then it seemed that sometimes like we were going to be required to go home, which like very much broke my heart because I had so many plans and so many people that I wanted to spend time with before I left. So many like ways that I was thinking about wrapping up the classes, mm -hmm. all of that. And then it turned out, okay, um, if your school requires you to go, then you'll go. And then for some people, it was their parents really were encouraging them to go back because it, who knows, like if you had stayed, you might have not been able to fly home for longer True. than the end of the school year. Mm -hmm. um, and then at one point, it, it looked like all of us were going to be required to go home. Mm. So for about a day, I was like trying to process that and it was like, it was after a lot of, okay, I'm deciding to stay, I'm deciding to stay, I'm deciding to stay, oh, I have to go home. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went home and I packed and I was like, okay, I, I became to be at peace with the fact of going home even though it sucked because I didn't, I didn't want to lose the last few weeks because I was increasingly getting sad thinking mm. about leaving and not seeing these wonderful people that were now like my family mm -hmm. um and then maybe it was like later the next day that abner called me and he was like wait <laughs> would you be willing to stay so i <laughs> i had accepted the fact that i was going home and i was gonna i was getting a ticket booked wow. <laughs> and then and then the next day he's like okay wait we haven't booked a ticket yet and I, and he's like would you be willing to stay if we could work something out and i was like Yes, I think I probably thought about it more, but I think I, I was, um, just very much so. Yes, I, <laughs> I want to like see this through. Mm -hmm. um, it was very sad because some other teachers, uh, of course, we had gotten really close as a group, and mm -hmm. some of them, um, just really difficult circumstances to go home or to stay. Like both, it was, it was really stressful and chaotic either way. Mm -hmm. But then. Um, me and Miss Joy, and I think a few other people worked out a plan of how we could do um, remote learning with the high school and the elementary school, mm -hmm. and the board eventually approved it. Wow. And then <laughs> we went through that whole process of of um, trying to make sure everyone could finish the school year with or without internet. Trying to like set up COVID safe stations. Palau hadn't gotten a positive case and hadn't for quite a while, mm -hmm. but we never knew because it was also very scary because it was something new that no one knew a lot about. So well, we all just did our best, honestly. That's, that's crazy. I remember being at Andrews and well, one, it was disappointing. We were just about to go on a, a trip with the gymnastics team. It was like the, the Thursday before spring break that got cut. Oh. And then I had been in contact with some of the missionaries, a lot of them from Palau and some who, who were in Andrews and all of a sudden they're all coming back. I was talking with the missions director there. Yeah. And I'm like, what is, what's happening? And I can't imagine the tension because it's, it's one thing when you know the end of the school year is coming and you can kind of, you, can you can't really brace for it, but you at least know. Yeah. But with this, everything's up in the air. And some people, they, whether of their choice or the, the pressure being put on them, have to choose what to do or they're being forced to do one thing or the other. Like, man, I, I wouldn't wish that kind of an ending for anyone's year of, of service. It's like, oh, man, I, I've been in Palau five years. I still feel like I have unfinished business. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine if I wasn't able to complete a year yeah. and just had to just get ripped out of it like that. Yeah. So, oof, yeah, that, <laughs> that, yeah, that's tough. Yeah. That's tough. We were really excited that we got approved to finish the year remotely. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, we realized just exactly what that meant. And it was difficult and challenging, but still exciting because we got to finish the year even though it looked very different. Mm -hmm. And I was so glad we, we didn't have an official promotion for the eighth grade class, but we got to have a get together. Okay. So I got to see them all, <laughs> thankfully. And then I was able to say goodbye 
before we flew out to several, but not all of my students. I didn't get to say goodbye, which mm. is heartbreaking, but yeah. that's why I've been trying to go back. Yes. Because, <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, just because I want to visit, but also because I haven't been able to officially say goodbye to so many people. That's true. Yeah. That closure. And the eighth graders, what, what are they now, juniors? I can't accept that. <laughs> <laughs> But it has to be, right? Yeah. That was 2020. Um, sophomores? No, they must be sophomores. Who who were the eighth graders that year? Um, Omung, Ashanda, Ponzi. I'm pretty sure they're sophomores now. Yeah, sophomores, I think is right. Because ahead of them would have been like Kaya, Destiny, Oh, I think that was a few years ahead of, a couple years ahead of them. Really? Because for my first year, um, the oh, eighth graders were. Now. That's yeah, right. Eltel and. Um, That's right. Yeah. Um, oh, man, the name is slipping my mind. I see his face. <laughs> I can hear him laughing. Oh, man. Omax. Yep. Oh, yeah. he, he graduated or he was promoted my second year. Okay. The, the COVID end of the year yeah so that that's his class yeah okay yeah, yeah. okay 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 yeah. so yeah they're sophomores yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's my dude man that's my yeah. little bro that's my yes little bro. oh i love that entire class <laughs> Yo, they're all, they're all good it's true i can't i can't put too many names out there because then people oh my goodness everyone's always accused me of having favorites i don't have any favorites okay i don't have any yeah maybe but i don't all right <laughs> i would love to list all 20. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm saying now Getting to the point where you're actually leaving and making the transition back uh, here, what, what was that like? That was pretty wild. <laughs> At first, um, when I got back, I felt kind of numb because not only had it not gone how I was like imagining it would with just like a normal end of the school year, um, but then again, like I mentioned that I have had a really hard time coming back mm -hmm. after mission trips and I kind of, make it a point to try to tell other student missionaries about that that might be coming it doesn't happen for everyone definitely mm -hmm. like some people might struggle more before or during or after all of the above or different combinations for me it was very hard to come back and honestly i'm not exactly sure why hmm. but big life changes kind of are hard on me mentally and physically i guess just like huge shifts and <laughs> trying to mentally keep up with it and trying to process everything takes mm. a little while and then working through some some things that I that I had within my relationship with God mm -hmm. um, because of some of those spiritual struggles that we talked about all of them due to my own choices all of them due to how I process the world and some mm -hmm. of my expectations and some of what I'm trying to work through. But mm -hmm. yeah, those are real things that I'm still working through, really. Mm -hmm. Because it, as much as we said that you can serve anywhere, it does feel different mm -hmm. serving at home or That's serving true. specifically <laughs> going somewhere for a year or two years with that mindset. Mm -hmm. It's a different mindset and it's a different set, I guess, of expectations even within yourself. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. Cause even though I've seen more opportunities for mission at Andrews, it's it's not the same. Like in one situation, you go there and ninety percent of the people are excited that you're there, and they wanna they wanna take what you're giving, but you come back here and it's like you're lucky if ten percent wanna take what you have to share, and the other ninety percent could care less. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the 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 culture and the environment is a little bit different which is also kind of odd, because then you're trying to talk to those 10% to go and realize the experience that they could have out there. Mm -hmm. So it, it is, there's a whole lot going on there, but you're right. There's a, uh, it is a challenge. And especially being at Andrews, I'm not gonna lie, no hate on Andrews. <laughs> I'm employed there, so no hate. But it's, it's hard to be there sometimes. And that question, why am I here, that I was talking about over the last couple weekends, I often think about that and try to figure out, well, if my mission isn't exactly what I'm hoping it could be here, then what is it? And how does that look? How do I try to make a difference in a place where like, 
people want to run around and throw chicken bones on the hallway. Like, <laughs> that, de- dealing with that and trying, it's like, ah, come on, like, step your game up. But it's, it's different. Mm. It's different. Yeah. Another element, too, is, like, the environment is different for sure. Um, in my first year, like, maybe, like, in, within the first few weeks in Palau, I wrote something, and the quote I remember of, like, a journal entry was, God is different here. Mm. And then after a while, like, I didn't exactly, I don't think, mean that. But to me, there is a very noticeable difference between my relationship with God when I'm in, when I'm specifically going somewhere to serve as a missionary Mm -hmm. versus when I'm here at home. Yeah, that's facts. And it's not that God's different. (laughs) It's that everything else is different Mm -hmm. and me, myself even, Mm -hmm. I'm different. And I think a lot of times we experience this, not all the time, it depends on the person, like there's never the same experience at all. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times I feel like some people will experience a very deepened relationship with God when they're somewhere specifically serving as a missionary. Mm -hmm. And I think that might be because we're faced with things we're not used to and we are pushed to rely on God more than we have to sometimes Mm -hmm. at home. Not not in all cases, of course, but being pushed to rely on God to fill in the blanks for what we can't do, Mm -hmm. I feel is a lot more um, of the type of thing you can face when you're really out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. But at home, I'm kind of just used to doing my own thing and (laughs) not really like, honestly, not really having, needing to rely on God in that same way, Mm -hmm. which is also another hard thing for me coming home because I feel like I'm not as close to God anymore, Mm -hmm. which is, which is hard, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I always love talking about the comfort zone on this podcast break free from the comfort zone missions and service but you're absolutely right there's there's something about the comfort zone that honestly should make us feel uncomfortable Mm -hmm. (laughs) just just the fact that everything is the way that it is and we're noticing these gaps and I understand a lot of people feel something and they're not aware of what exactly that is that they're missing but it's true, there's, there's some things that we can only access and experience outside the comfort zone. And God, we, we respond to God differently when we're outside the comfort zone. That is a thousand percent the truth. Even when I went back over Christmas break, it was easier to do my devotions for the couple weeks that I was there, as opposed to the day before I left and the day I got back. Yeah. <laughs> it's, there's something about it and I, I had to ask myself the same thing. It's like, there, the spiritual experience can't be that much different. What am I doing that's making it hard for me here yeah. to have that kind of experience? Yeah. And so, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of looking in and trying to figure that out. And it's annoying, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's annoying yeah. to, be, to be feeling like, how come I can't figure this out and why is it so easy there? But with, with everything, it is harder here to, kind of push against the walls of that comfort zone yeah. uh, and it's easier just to you're not in it at all you yeah. don't have those bounds when you're out there in the mission field and honestly I feel like almost like I shouldn't say this but my relationship with God has still not gotten back to the point where I want it to be mm-hmm. and it's been I think a couple of years maybe yes I think a couple of years now yeah so it's not like an easy fix either And of course, everyone's relationship with God is unique and a different journey and requires different, um, different ways of processing and learning and dealing with everything, of course. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's a, it's difficult to try and get back (laughs) to where you want it to be, trying not to force an inauthentic connection with God, Mm -hmm. but trying to pursue and genuinely want to get to know him and, that navigating that balance again trying to figure out how to actually love god Mm -hmm. how to be a person who loves god and how to act like one there's a lot to that (laughs) (laughs) Nah, you're right 100 percent. i i'd be lying if i said i didn't feel the exact same way like there's and i think even more the irony is that i'm in the seminary learning all these things so it's like i'm talking jesus all the time right but i still it's a noticeable difference of how I feel personally on a spiritual level when I was out there serving as opposed to being here in school. It's, it's, it's night and day. 
it's night and day. And it's a struggle going through all of that and trying to say, I want that back, but I feel like I have to struggle through this here just to, it's something I have to do. It's a commitment I made to myself, get that degree and, and take the next step. So I have to do it. Yeah. But it's like, man, I, <laughs> I'm looking back in the rear, but I was like, that's what I want. <laughs> And I don't have it. I don't have it. I'm, I'm working towards it. But yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, so, it's always working towards it. Yeah. <laughs> so don't don't feel bad about saying that. Don't feel like it's something you shouldn't say because that's the reality. Yeah. That's the reality. And I think I think the the sooner more people can get comfortable admitting where we really are and how we really feel spiritually, that'll help us to ask questions in, about the gaps that we have in our experience and for a lot of people, that will lead the way to service and people taking advantage of the missionary experience. Yeah. So, I, again, I think that's super valuable because, I mean, I see it at Andrews. There's a lot of people. I, I'll, I'll sum it up like this. Speaking at Vespers a couple weeks ago now, and we have the statue of Andrews outside the front of the church. I, I was asking them, okay, here's the statue. There's a three-letter statement on it. I asked if anybody knew what the statement said. Nobody knew. Church full of people, nobody knew. These students all knew the statue was there. Nobody knew what it said. Legacy of leadership. It's like, how, how are we walking past this thing all the time? And I even said it on the stage. It's like, oh, the only time we look at the, the statue is when it had the little quarantine mask on it. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. It's like we're, we're oblivious to just what's really there. And we're walking around, I'm calling myself a Christian, and I'm at Andrews, so I must be a good Christian, but totally missing what the experience is supposed to be about. So hopefully more people can become aware. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we need that community to be comfortable, to Absolutely. talk and get support with what we're struggling with, because mm -hmm. it's hard to go through things feeling like you are not able to share it with the people around you. It's true. I agree. But I definitely think there are those active communities that definitely are moving towards that and currently are doing that, which is awesome. Yeah. So I, I think it's all just a process of getting there. Yeah, it's going to take time. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I love talking about not just the hype, get out there and serve, it's amazing, I went scuba diving, but also... <laughs> the struggle, because mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's about keeping it real. And we can have the whole cloud nine experience all the time, or we can have a real experience. I'm gonna take the real one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so absolutely, absolutely. So from all of that, you're here at Berman now, absolutely random chance that we happen to meet here. <laughs> awesome. Like what's, what's next for you? That feels like it's so up in the air right now. <laughs> I will probably have a better answer in a few weeks, maybe, okay, okay. depending on what happens with school and if I get accepted to where I want to go and if everything falls into place as if I feel like it might. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, honestly, that is okay, too. <laughs> and I'll just figure out where um, I feel that God is directing. Okay. And that's stressful. Like, I'm not just easily saying that because I've been stressed for a while trying to figure out what's next. Mm -hmm. But I do honestly trust that even if it's not in the way that I'm feeling like it will go, it is going to go somewhere and I will be headed somewhere. Mm -hmm. But right now, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure where. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. As we bring this to a close, I, I have just a couple more questions. How valuable do you think the experience of missions is missions and service for me or overall for you in in general for people who are listening for me um it was i would not change going to either of the um schools that i've gone to even though there were a lot of difficulties to overcome i'm i would never change the the reality of that experience so for me I think it was very much life shaping um, I don't know what it would be like for other people though I, I honestly did used to say I think everyone should experience a student missionary year mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I would say that anymore and that's just because recently after getting back from Palau as well I've been looking at um, 
the whole concept of missions and I also don't like I, I debated whether I should say this or not because there are negative impacts of missions mm -hmm. there are there are ways that you can do more harm than good I agree there I are agree. ways that <laughs> that someone who's not trained is going to somewhere else doing things that they should not be doing mm -hmm. so I wouldn't overall blanket say that everyone should do missions I think a lot depends on the context mm -hmm. the state of your heart um, whether the people that you would be serving actually need you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a lot of other elements that need to be c considered I've even considered um, whether it's okay to go as a teacher if you don't have a degree as a teacher mm -hmm. definitely there's there's a lot of damage if medical volunteers are not trained or or um, like have the degree to use in situations where they should not be serving. Mm -hmm. um, and I've thought of that as a teacher as well. Am I as a English major, but not an education major, the right person for this job? Mm -hmm. And it's a tough question. On one hand, a lot of these schools wouldn't be able to continue functioning without student missionaries. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's, it's not always ideal, but sometimes it is. Um, I do think that God can work in ways that we might not um, might not understand, mm -hmm. definitely. So that's honestly a struggle currently that I have with missions because it's not always good. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not always bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's there, fair. Yeah, there are ways in which you can do it with the best ethical considerations and, um, yeah intentions yeah i i agree with that i think i think that a lot has to go into it it's definitely not a decision that people should make lightly um that consideration absolutely needs to be taken and i guess i say that particularly in the sense of like my first year as a missionary i went because i wanted to have an adventure and that's 100% the wrong reason to go. <laughs> and I know, I mean, praise God, I had the opportunity to go back and to a degree right some of the wrongs from that first year. And I talked with some of the students and I asked them to honestly tell, tell me their perception of me my first year when I was there. It shocked me. I had no idea, but I was like, oh my God, I'm so glad I'm here to, <laughs> to, to fix this. But it's, it's true, you're right. There's, there's a lot of consideration that needs to go there, a lot of, um, heart preparing, a lot of making sure that you're in tune with the right things, and there is a lot of knowledge that's beneficial to have, whether it's a degree going in yeah. advance. Yeah. Uh, we know God can do amazing things to make the mission system work, because he has been, but it's it's definitely worth thinking about yeah. by going into it, for sure. I, agree. I should also say, in my experience, it's not just someone being plopped in the classroom there's a lot of wonderful training yes. and there's a lot of incredible support before you get there mm -hmm. during the training and planning and preparing during the staff meetings the other teachers helping you out like it's not as if you're not being helped true there's uh, there's <laughs> really really good training so i'm not saying there's not i just want to i just want to say just that, just to clarify yeah just to clarify. yeah <laughs> no nah, no problem no problem let me, let me conclude with this question right here. When you look at your experience and missions and how it's impacted you, um, do you feel like it was something positive that you think people should consider? I think so, yeah. <laughs> Depending <laughs> on the individual, mm -hmm. I really hate making blanket statements. Absolutely, it depends sure. on the individual, it depends where they're at, what they're, what they're um, feeling like they're ready for. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, does take a, a jump of faith so it really really depends on the situation on the context on on what the what the plan is mm -hmm. for what might be happening I agree once yeah. again and I'll add on to that like for those of you considering it don't don't go into it without actually thinking about these things because these people matter this isn't just some experience we're doing so we could say we were a missionary like 
the students that you potentially go to impact, their experience matters. And the way in which we conduct ourselves in that can do harm or good. And that's something that we have to be aware of if we're really trying to share good news and, and leave a good impact in the places that we hope to serve. That's something that we absolutely have to consider and think about. Um, so many good things to think about regarding missions in this podcast. Jackie, I want to thank you for the time that you spent. Thank you for your experience, your service. Thank you. And uh, we'll have to catch up in a few weeks to see <laughs> what's next. Yeah. That'll be like part two of this episode. But I want to thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for watching or listening. Once again, you can find Go The Mission on anywhere that you, any platform that you listen to podcasts, you can find it there. Search for Go The Mission. And you can find The Buff Missionary on Instagram and YouTube to watch video of the, the podcast and vlogs on missions and other things as well. So like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. You know how we roll. And finally, remember, to exist, it's not enough. We out here to be out here. Do something about it. So until next time, let it do what it do, baby.